Uh, I wanted to talk about the differences uh, between these because they both live in the same price range. You can pretty much get these uh, whether you get a 49 or a 61. They're pretty much going to be anywhere between the 200 to 300 dollar range. And these are my favorite in the semi-weighted uh, category. These two are my favorite, so I wanted to kind of shoot them out, talk about the pros, the cons, the differences, and then hopefully to help you decide which one uh, you ultimately want to get. When it comes to control, these guys are pretty much tick for tack in and out. However, I love the way that the um, the Novation feels in terms of its knobs and faders. They have a premium rubber kind of type feel. Same with the pads. They feel really good to the touch and so on and so forth. Um, they feel really, really good uh, with that. So in terms of how the controls feel uh, and they're set up, uh, the Novation wins to, to me in terms of the feel because I love the feel of these. They're quiet. I can hit them. I can press my play button, my stop button, and it doesn't make noise. Whereas on the M Audio, it's clicky, clicky, clacky, clacky, clicky, you know so forth with all of your particular um, uh, buttons and stuff. And the knobs don't have as elegant of a feel as the Novation does. Uh, so it all boils down to that. Uh, these are very noisy. Of course, the knobs don't make, you know, make noise, but the, uh, the buttons do, you know, whether you're pressing the art button or whatever, you're getting noise. Whereas these are soft buttons and they kind of got a premium feel to it. Now, the, depending on how you like your layout setup, um, you know, it could depend. So, you know, you got your pads right here. Typically with, um, uh, with, you know, most MIDI controllers in this range, they'll put the pads over here in the, um, faders over here, kind of like how M audio has it, you know, laid out. Um, but they decided to go a route where they put the pads over here and the, uh, faders and everything over here. So you can kind of look at that and make your determination about which layout you like. I kind of like this layout a little bit better personally, because if I'm playing, especially if I'm using this board in a live situation, maybe, you know, some of you are like that. I could do things with my right hand. I could play a chord and kind of fill things up and hold a chord while I adjust that. If that's what you're into, um, you know, and then I'm right handed. So it's kind of more intuitive. Now, here's a little bit of a KVAT difference that where the M audio is stronger in terms of control. This has more profiles uh, and more control options for multiple DAWs. You're talking about Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, FL Studio, um, so on and so forth. They have Studio One. They have control modes that work pretty much for all of those DAWs. You can make the uh, launch key work in like logic and you can probably put it in HUI mode and make it work in other DAWs, but it is primarily geared and set up for those who use Ableton. So if you use Ableton, this is going to be the one that's going to really win for you. Um, and then this one gives you a more cross DAW appeal. This one appeals to me uh, better in that area because I use multiple, D multiple DAWs. I use Logic. I use Ableton. I use Studio One. I use Pro Tools. So I could be bouncing between any of those DAWs on any given day. So I need to be able to have that flexibility to be able to work in multiple DAWs. So the trade-off is I get clicky clacky buttons as opposed to soft buttons over here. Now, again, I could probably make it work in the different other DAWs, uh, but it's really set up for Ableton. Now, when it comes to Ableton, if you're an Ableton user, they do give you pads and, and launch clips over here on the Oxygen Pro, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, but this is really set up uh, and lined up to really help you work inside Ableton. You have Capture MIDI, Quantize, you have your click, you have all of your different ones here. And it's the, the whole layout, stopping mutant clips, and it's all set up to work really, really good in Ableton. If you're an Ableton user, I would suggest you just go ahead and just bite the bullet and get the launch key because it's going to be uh, the better 
a better flow for you if you're strictly an Ableton user. But if you're a guy or gal that utilizes multiple DAWs and you need to be able to bounce from one thing to the other, uh, or you need a, you know something that works really good with Logic, really good with Pro Tools and other DAWs, this is probably gonna be your best bet on the M Audio. So another thing with control with both of these is the same, is you're getting a chord mode, an art mode, and a scale mode that just comes you know, and I talk about those in each one of these videos and I even dem demonstrate them in both the, uh, the initial reviews of these particular ones and how they work. I will say that to me, the implementation of ARP and scale and fixed chord mode is a little bit more elegant on the uh, launch key as opposed to here, but you do get a little bit better feedback on the screen from uh, the M audio, just from, you know, my perspective. Uh, but they both kind of do the same thing. So if you're looking for that sort of, you know, uh, workflow to where you can do your, those of you who like those things, scale mode, art modes, and fixed chords and stuff, uh, they both offer that same uh, level of control. Uh, they're just, um, you know, they're just different implementations of it, but I like the that, you know, pretty much better on the Novation. Okay, so now let's move over into the key bed territory. Uh, I know a lot of us make our decisions based on how the key bed feels and how it plays uh, and all those different things like that. And so uh, the key bed, uh, if, if I had to choose one that feels the best, gives you this more remote, the most responsive, I would probably go with the um, launch key. It's probably more a little bit more dynamic uh, than the uh, than the oxygen is. So watch what I say when I say dynamic. So I'll play these chords on the launch key. Then I'll play the same chords here on the oxygen. So you see how it's a, a, I'm playing the same velocity. And I'm getting, I'm getting harder velocities playing on the oxygen versus that. So if you want something a little bit more dynamic, this is gonna be your best bet. And especially if you want something a little bit more, less noisy, then you're gonna go with the launch key. So it's got some noise, that noise compared to the oxygen. So this one's a little bit more clacky. You know what I mean? This one, is more subject to getting on your significant other's nerves when you're sitting on headphones at night playing as opposed to this one. It's got some noise, but it's not as that. Now, I'm not a fan, and I said this in my review of this, of the, the, the feel, the hollowness of the keys. Like these keys, especially the black notes have, they're not, they don't feel solid. They feel really, really, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I'm real careful about saying cheap but it's not it's not my favorite feel of the keys but it more it's more dynamic than this key bed i will say that this is a little bit more solid uh these are a little bit more hollow but they're um you know the feel so hopefully that kind of clears up now here's the real deciding factor between the key beds that you need to be kind of mindful of this key bed has aftertouch on it so i can play it and i can press in and get modulation get different things like that so if i play uh like a synth sound here if i play it and i press in press in listen to how the chord changes because I have aftertouch built in. Whereas this one, same chord, I can press in, but I'm not getting anything. So if aftertouch is something that you're really, really interested in and really want on a keyboard, then you wanna go with this because this is probably the one of the cheapest boards you can get, MIDI boards you can get with aftertouch already built into it. So that's, that's really, really dope with that. So those are kind of how the key beds stack against each other. If I had to choose one personally, I probably would go with this because I want that aftertouch. I can deal with the clackiness of the keys and the less on the dynamics for aftertouch because what I'm gonna use this for is gonna be synth stuff, uh, pads, leads, uh, auxiliary instruments, 
colors uh, for lack of a better word. And so that after touch is a great function for that. I'm not going to be using this for piano stuff. I'm not going to be using this for EPs and playing and, and you know, trying to be nuanced. So having something with after touch uh, and close to synth action really kind of sells it for me for a semi weighted board. So as far as in out is concerned, and I'm not going to flip it or anything like that, you know, um, because you wouldn't be able to see it on the screen anyway. But uh, the M Audio and both the uh, launch key, they both come with uh, the same in out. You get a sustain pedal jack, a MIDI out jack, and um, that's pretty much it, you know, your USB. But the M Audio comes with a power switch which I think is really, really dope. I love having a power switch. I know people say, get you a powered hub and flip it off like that and all those things like that. Eh, that's not my fault. I, I'm a traditional kind of guy. I like to reach back and, you know, when I'm done at the day and just flip it off. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just, that's just me. If you don't care about that sort of thing, then it doesn't matter. But you're going to get a power um, off button with this. Uh, versus the the launch key that doesn't have any of that, but they're both lightweight They both kind of have the same kind of weight to them So it's not really a, uh, something to discuss about which one is more portable uh, because they're both really portable They're both made of plastic. They're both gonna have the same level of durability to them So it's not something that you know, you have to kind of discuss with that So now let's jump into something a little bit more interesting and that would be the software that it comes with so the launch key comes with uh, Ableton Live, you get a Serato sample, um, a Serato LE, it's a, it's a sampler. You get a two month membership to Splice, which is really, really cool. I use Splice. Uh, Spitfire Audio, you know, lab strings, you get addictive keys, you get a, a reverb kind of plug in, you get like this little tape thing and, um, you know, you get some little stuff like that, little sound collective. Um, sounds and things like that. So it's really, really cool with that. But uh, the M Audio is going to give you a whole lot more software because you're going to get Pro Tools first. You're going to get uh, uh, MPC Beats. You're going to get uh, Ableton Live Lite. You're going to get Hybrid 3. You're going to get Air Velvet. You're going to get uh, Mini Grand. You're going to get Vacuum. You're going to get Boom. Uh, and you're going to get the DB33. So you're getting like three different kind of DAWs and you're getting um, a bunch of other little things. So software, the M Audio wins. So if you're looking for something that's kind of like the full package, I would say that the M Audio gives you the full package. You're getting aftertouch, you're getting controls, you're getting all of the fixed scale and chord modes that everything, you know, that all these boards are coming with now. You're getting um, you're getting multiple DAW control. You're getting a fantastic software package that comes with it. Uh, that's where it kind of shines um, in that. And my pick, honestly, between the two would be this one. Now, I always say this. If you're an Ableton user, I have people that hit me up and say, man, I use Ableton. I tell them, get the, get the Novation. If you're an Ableton user, if that's all you're using, if that's your bag, this is going to be the winner uh, over this because it's just a little bit better suited and set up for Ableton. So I hope this video helped you. I hope they gave you some insight into both of these board boards and hope it helps you make a decision about which one you want to kind of grab uh, and which one you want to kind of use. Um, Cause I try to try to highlight all of the different points between them. Uh, but you know what you can do. We do this on every video. You can hit the like button, hit the share button, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think, which one is your favorite. If you've got experience with either one of these, I want to hear from you. Uh, do all those things that you do on the video. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Oh yeah, I didn't say this. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit the bell, all that stuff like that. I'm out. Holla at your boy.